Well, praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Wow. What a wonderful presence. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Just a, a sense of anticipation in this house today. At this time, our kids can be dismissed for Genesis kids. And uh, pray for them as they go next door. <laughs> it's always a joy to see these young ones. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Can I tell you, let me hear, I want you to hear me right now. You know, I might take, talk about it later. But everything we're doing right now, not for us. It's for them. It's setting them up for God things. Friends, if all we're doing is living for us right now, then it's going to end with us when we end. But if we're planting something that we're expecting to exceed our lifetime, amen, we've got to be planting legacy to God be the glory, amen. Well, it's a joy to be in the Lord's house. Good to be with each and every one of you. You ready to have church or continue having church? In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We welcome you. We welcome those that are joining us online. Pray God's power, God's blessing, God's authority in your lives be experienced in Jesus' name, amen. Win the day. Win the day, seed the clouds. Win the day, seed the clouds. It was back in uh, November 13th, 1946, there's a single propeller airplane took off from Synecdoche County Airport with a rather unique payload. Contained six pounds of dry ice and rather uh, heading out for a unique mission. The pilot was a chemist by the name of Vincent Schaefer who had been conducting covert experiments at the General Electric Research Laboratory. Using a GE freezer chilled to sub-zero temperatures, Schaefer created clouds uh, using his breath as condensation and seeded those man-made clouds with dry ice. The dry ice crystallized, sparking a chemical reaction that caused snow crystals to begin to form in the freezer. A few months later, it was time for a field test, so Schaefer rented the aforementioned airplane, flew into a cumulus cloud, and dumped the dry ice. Eyewitnesses on the ground said it was almost like the cloud exploded. The subsequent snowfall was visible 40 miles away. You see, the, the art of seeding clouds is a marvel of modern day science, but the idea of seeding clouds is as old as the prophet Elijah. Now, if you have your Bible, you can meet me in a moment in 1 Kings chapter 18. We're in a series called Win the Day. Now, we're at our final habit that we need to develop. We've already been talking about the previous six. We talked about flip the script. What I mean by that, to change your life, you have to change your story. You have to change the narrative of your life. Some of you are still living in a narrative that somebody else wrote over your life. No one else has got the right to, to, to put down your storyline. It's between you and God to write the storyline for your life. See, I grew up at a time where those were trying to define me as stupid, ignorant, no common sense. I was constantly told those words again and again and again. How stupid I was. How ignorant I was. How I had la And you know what? Before long, before somebody else is saying it, you begin to speak it to yourself. And that's what I want you to hear me right now. More important than the experiences you go through is your narrative. 
of those experiences. In other words, self-talk is vital. Instead of somebody else telling me that I was stupid, I began to, well, I'm so stupid. I'm so ignorant. Come on, don't act like nobody else. Yours might be, I, I remember my brother was bullied for a completely different reason. And, and I don't mean to be offensive, I'm just telling you what my brother began to believe was the narrative over his life. I'm so fat, I'm so ugly. Uh, because everyone else had been trying to define him and write the, the storyline of his life. It wasn't until God got involved that he was able to begin to put down a new narrative. Hallelujah. And the same with me. I am a child of God. And I right now am who God says I am. I am no longer what anybody else used to tell me, what anybody else used to speak over me or try to speak into me. I am now a child of God. The, the script has been flipped. Amen. Amen. Second, we talked about kiss the wave. Sometimes kissing the wave is simply this. You got to take the first step of faith and when you take the first step of faith, God will take the second step of faith. Amen. Listen, it's not faith if you see it. You know, it's not faith if you wait until God takes the step first. God's waiting for us to take that first step, and when we take that first step, God will show you what he can do. Whew. Third, we talked about eat the frog. Just ruin somebody's appetite. <laughs> Eat the frog. What is that? It's how you start the day sets the tone for the rest of the day. Amen. Amen. It said, you know, if you've got to eat a frog, eat it first thing in the morning. That way you got the worst part of the day behind you. <laughs> The next one was fly the kite. How this massive bridge was built that held a locomotive started with simply a kite and a kite string being flown across the chasm and from that kite string a larger rope and from that larger rope was a cable and it just continued. But it started with a kite string. Sometimes big things happen simply with that kite string. The small thing. Don't despise the days of small beginnings. Cut the rope. Cut the rope. There comes a moment when you've got to cut the rope and take that step or that leap of faith. And then we talked about wind the clock. Don't just exist. Live. Start living. Amen. Just because you know the, your birth date, your birth date may, may be the day you were born, but I'm talking about that moment when you really began to live. Amen. Today we're talking about seed the clouds. Seed the clouds, 1 Kings 18. Let me set the scene for you. It's not rained in Israel for three and a half years. That's a drought. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And that's when and where and why the prophet Elijah climbs to the top of Mount Carmel and he begins in a way to seed the clouds. And we're going to pick up in verse 41 in 1 Kings 18. Elijah said to Ahab, Go get something to eat and drink, for I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. Ooh. So, Ahab went off to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the, to, to the top of Mount Carmel, bent down to the ground, put his face between his knees. Go and look, 
toward the sea, he told his servant. And when he went, <laughs> came back, what did he say? There's nothing. Seven times Elijah said, go back. The seventh time the servant said, I saw a little cloud about the size of a man's hand rising from the sea. So Elijah shouted, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot, go down before the rain stops you. Woo! I hear, I see, you better get to move on because it's about to start a downpour. Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds, the wind rose, heavy rain started falling, and Ahab rode off. Then, the power of the Lord came on Elijah, tucking his cloak into his belt. He ran ahead. Here's a man riding a chariot, racing off. Here's another man that fastens up his robes, takes off running, and he outruns. Don't you ever discount the power of God coming upon you and the difference God's Spirit can make in your life. And he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I love the subplot. We're not sure what route Elijah ran, but it was no less than 17 miles. May have been as many as 30 miles. And he beats Ahab's chariot. <laughs> Elijah ran from Mount Carmel to Jezreel. Now, first of all, I got to say, that's impressive. I'd say, hats off. <laughs> Amen. Now, let's dive into this today. Pastor, how do you see the clouds? I want to make it simple as one, two, three. I'm going to say these, and then we'll put each individual on the screen. I want to read through these three simple things that we can do. First of all, you see the clouds with prophetic imagination. Second, you see the clouds with patient persistence. Third, you see the clouds with bold prayer. Amen. Amen. See, I, I want us today to get to the place that we really begin to believe big. That we really begin to believe big and that we begin to pray bold prayers. Amen. So first of all, you seed the clouds with prophetic imagination. Now, more than a half century ago, Dr. Alfred Tomatis was confronted with the most curious case of his 50-year career as a world-renowned ear, nose, and throat doctor. Celebrated opera singer had lost his ability to hit certain notes, even though those notes were well within his vocal range. He'd been to other specialists, all of whom thought it was a vocal problem. Dr. Tomatis thought otherwise. Using a sonometer, Dr. Tomatis discovered that the opera singer was producing 140 decibel sound waves at a meter's distance. That's louder than a military jet taking off from an aircraft. He could no longer hit those notes because he could no longer hear those notes. You see, the opera singer had been deafened by the sound of his own voice. Dr. Tomatis said, the voice can only reproduce what the ear can hear. So the French Academy of Medicine dubbed it the Tomatis effect, and you gather the ramifications are profound. Here's my theory. All of us have problems. I didn't come to hear that today, preacher. <laughs> All of
of us have problems. Relational problems, emotional problems, spiritual problems. Amen. And, and we think those problems are the problem. But I think many, if not most of those problems, are simply the symptom of the true problem. The root cause of our problem is that we have a hearing problem. It's ears that have been deafened to the still, small voice of the Holy Spirit. How? Well, I talked about it a few weeks ago, and I want to remind you, because of all the white noise in society today. I mean, all the voices. Amen. Amen. We're bombarded with news, false news, fake news. Uh, every minute, every hour of every day, we, we got online advertisers using clickbait. We've got social media uh, algorithms designed to keep us in our echo chambers. And it's hard for God to get a word in edgewise. You know, every once in a while... Be sensitive enough to hear or feel God tap you on the shoulder. Are you listening to me? Are you hearing me? I'm trying to help you. But all the white noise, all the sounds that are around us, all the voices that are clamoring for our attention have deafened us to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But here... That's been there, and it's going to continue to be there. But I'm going to go back to something I've talked about already today. I think this is our primary problem. Our primary problem is our own self-talk. We are deafened by the sound of our own voice like the opera singer. Come on. We've talked about the, the, the habit again, habit number one, flip the script. About 60,000 thoughts fire across our mental junction box. Man, can you think about that? 60,000 thoughts fire across our mental junction box that direct our impulses every day. According to, negative, uh, to the Cleveland Clinic, 80% of those thoughts are negative. Get, I want you to hear this. 60,000 thoughts every day, 80% of those are, are negative. If 80% of those thoughts are negative, what's that mean for our impulses? Amen. The majority of our impulses are influenced by our negative thoughts. And those negative thoughts, in a sense, become the way we talk to ourselves. How do we flip the script? I talked about this a few weeks ago. Won't you get this? Scripture is our script cure. You want to rewrite the narrative of your life? Get in the Word of God. Get into Scripture, because Scripture is your script cure. Scripture will enable you to write a new script for your life, a healthy, fruitful script for your life. It's through God's Word that our minds are renewed. Romans 12 and 2, amen? It's the way we tell ourselves a better story. It's the way we turn up the volume on God's voice. I asked a question a few weeks ago, and I want to ask again. What percentage of your thoughts, words, or actions are simply the regurgitation of news media watch and the so social media you follow? Think about it. There are algorithms designed to keep you in that echo chamber. That same sound is continuing to echo in our heads. Amen. The net result is an ear that cannot hear the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. So again, let me, let me flip that script. You'll either remain trapped 
or through the power of God's Word and through the regenerative power of the Holy Spirit, you can replace those unhealthy, negative, destructive thought patterns when you feed your thoughts with God's Word, you begin to govern your self-talk according to God's Word. Am I making sense today? In other words, you control the steering wheel to your life. Amen. You can choose today to stop feeding unhealthy thought patterns. Amen. Or you can stay stuck. But the choice is yours. You've never, I don't care what anybody's told you, what you tell yourself, you have never lost the ability to control your thoughts or your mind. Amen. Now let me ask another question. What percentage of your thoughts, words, and actions are the revelation you're getting from God's Word? Amen. That, that, that will determine the direction of your life. If it's negative, it's going to lead to destruction. But if it's guided by God's Word, it leads to life. Hallelujah. we got to be grounded in God's Word. When we open the Bible, God opens His mouth. As you read the Bible, you'll hear God's voice. His authoritative voice will empower you to uproot unfruitful negative thoughts. And I want you to hear me. Not only do we need to uproot those negative destructive thought patterns, we need to replace them with healthy we can't just create a void because something will find its way back in if we don't fill it with God's Word. See, the best way to turn up the volume on that still small voice is, is simply a daily Bible reading program. Now, I want to contrast that. Look at verse, look at this. Elijah said to Ahab, Go get something to eat and drink, for I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. Elijah hears something no one else is listening for. He hears something that hasn't been heard in more than three years. How? Elijah has a, a, a prophetic ear. And that's, what a, that's where a prophetic ear imagination starts. Listen, let me give you prophetic imagination is seeing the invisible, hearing the inaudible, and believing the impossible. Amen. Walter Brueggemann says it this way, the task is reframing so we can re-experience the realities that are right in front of us from a different angle. Two spies said they could. Ten spies said they couldn't. They saw the same thing, but the problem was in, in the way in which they framed their experience. There are those uh, uh, right here that you need to begin to reframe your experiences. Sometimes it takes uh, the, the form of supernatural gifts, like a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge. Sometimes it, it takes the form of a supernatural solutions, like supernatural gift of discernment or healing. Either way, God blesses it. Look, look the whole nation of Israel has held at bay by one giant. Because they saw that the giant was more powerful than they were. There's a little shepherd boy by the name of David bringing his brother's lunch and check on things for his dad, steps up and hears the taunts of the giant and begins to question in his mind, why is nobody doing anything about this? Because... They have framed their experience as that of defeat because they were just simply looking at their own ability. Here's David comes up and he says, No, you're looking at this thing all wrong. 
And I want to tell somebody today, you may have a giant staring you in your face that's bigger than you, but is not bigger than the God you serve. Let God begin to reframe. You come to me with your spear and your sword and all that stuff, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. You going down, big boy. <laughs> Amen. Come on. I don't know what it says in the original Greek. Or All I can tell you is when I read that word of God, David through prophetic imagination already saw the giant falling. Whew. Through prophetic imagination, begin to see what God can do. Mm. Amen. When you exercise prophetic imagination, it may seem like you're out of touch with reality. But it's because you're in touch with a reality beyond your five senses. Things that are beyond your taste or touch or smell or feel, all those natural things, you're in touch with another realm. Hallelujah. A realm that's beyond this realm. Amen. Second thing is this. Seed the clouds with patient persistence. Woo. I just said a dirty word to some folks in this house today. Did he say the P word? Did he say patience? Come on. Get on the road and right now and see. Amen. Patience. Not only, it, it's been lost out there. It, it, it's my money and I want it now. <laughs> and come on. That's the mindset. We've, we don't like waiting on anything. Patient persistence. Listen, in the first century B.C., there's this drought, uh, not unlike... Uh, the drought that, that Elijah had threatened to destroy a generation, a generation before Jesus. So there's a man who had, ha, had an Elijah anointing. The people asked for him to, to pray for rain, and he did something curious. He didn't climb to, uh, Mount Carmel, but he took his staff, drew a circle in the sand. He knelt inside the circle, and he prayed this prayer. He said, Sovereign Lord, I swear before your great name that I will not leave this circle until you have mercy upon your children. For you know what that is? That's a bold prayer. Uh, embracing uh, uh, persistence. Amen. Patient persistence. And we'll talk more about bold prayers. But according to history, honey, the circle maker was captivated by one phrase in the one verse of Scripture, Psalm 126, 1, when the Lord brought back the captive to Zion, we were like men who dreamed. Wow. Have you lost your ability to dream God-sized dreams? Come on. We're getting ready to start into a brand new series. Start drawing your circle, friends. Start drawing your circle. You've got needs that are bigger than you are. But you've also got a God that's bigger than you are. And that God's for you. And if that God's for you, who can be against you? Amen. The, that phrase, we were like men who dreamed, provoked a question that Hane wrestled with. Is it possible for a person to dream continuously for 70 years? Now hold this thought. Longitudinal studies have shown that as we age, the cognitive center of gravity tends to shift from the right brain to the left brain. 
the oversimplification, the, the, the left brain is the point of logic, and the right brain is the point of imagination. The neurological tendency presents a problem. See, at some point, most of us stop living out of imagination and start living out of memory. How many times as a pastor have I heard, well, pastor, it used to be. Pastor, we used to do. I'm okay. I just heard him. God said, amen. <laughs> amen. We get hung up. We stop creating the future and simply want to repeat the past. We stop living by faith and start living by logic. Now, either I'm preaching good right now. <laughs> Amen. Can I tell you something right now before you really want to stone me? You go back 70 years ago. There were guys doing cutting-edge stuff that the generation before hadn't seen. And what it is, is it's become history and memory, and we've made that, my God. We've made that an idol. Come on. The way we used to do things has become an idol that we want to worship at. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We're going to destroy that idol today and say, God, I want you to be God to this generation. Yes. Amen. Yes. Listen, when we stop living by faith, start living by logic, that's when we, we stop living and start dying. Most people die long before the date on their death certificate. Can I tell you it doesn't have to be that way? Without a vision, people perish. Without a prophetic revelation of God, chaos ensues. Listen to me, vision is a preservative. If you have vision, you're never past your prime. If you have a vision, you're never out of a... Just ask Caleb. I mean, I've talked about him over the last few weeks. Ask Caleb. Caleb is now 85 years of age. You want to talk about patient persistence? 40 years. He'd been walking with those that didn't want to. And here we are back at that same mountain. And he says, give me this mountain. Even at age 85? Yes. How? Vision. It's a, an expression of prophetic imagination. Guess what? It takes patient persistence. If you want to dream big, you've got to think long. You've got to play the long game. Listen, either memory takes over imagination or imagination overtakes memory. Amen. Imagination is the way we seed the clouds. This is blessing my heart to the third and fourth generation. We've watched, I'm just going to pick on them because I feel safe picking on them. They won't throw anything. Or at least I don't think they will. Let me pick on Anthony and Dee Dee. Uh, nothing against you, AJ, okay? I'm going to talk about your sisters. Leave you alone, okay? <laughs> Gave me a thumbs up, so I got his approval. <laughs> Whew, man, I feel the Holy Spirit. Jake Morgan, we have watched them grow from infancy to college students. They're not the only ones I'm picking on them because I think overall they like me. <laughs> Why 
one of these days, the Lord tarries. They're going to have kids. One of these days of the Lord tarries, those kids will have kids. I've got a 10-year-old and a 5-year-old granddaughter. The Lord tarries, one of these days, they're going to have kids. I have got to have a vision that's sowing a legacy for generations that haven't even been born yet. Amen. My God, when we went to youth camp this past week or so to pick up the kids and whew, saw Logan up there, part of the worship team, and I saw three other of our uh, students that went in the drama team. I'm saying, yeah, we're setting up legacy that's going to exceed our lifetime. I saw Morgan and Cassie overseeing cabin girls investing in a generation coming up. Come on, somebody help me right now. I'm preaching pretty good. If somebody helped me just a little, I'd preach better. I'm not saying anything bad right now. I think I'm saying pretty good stuff. Don't you want something? I don't want to hear of, I don't even want to dream of, that there would come a generation that neither knew God nor the works of God. Amen. Zoom out. Zoom out. Zoom out. Now, let's get back. I love verse 44. I saw a cloud the size of a man's hand. That's small, isn't it? A cloud, a cloud the size of a, a man's hand. That's not the point. Again, I want to remind you, don't despise the day of small beginnings. If you're doing little things like they're big things, got to do big things like they're little things. One, you have to attempt things that are beyond your ability, beyond your resources, beyond your education, beyond your experience. That's when and where God shows up and shows off. You got to do things that are beyond you. Listen, if you do only do things that you're able to do, then it doesn't take God. You don't even need God. I want to live a life of faith that says, I need God to do this. Amen. Amen. I'm not sure who, uh, who said it, but I heard a pastor say a long time ago, do things that are twice your size. In other words, stretch your faith. Here's another lesson. When you're faithful here, you don't always experience the blessing right then and right there. But God will bless you somehow, some way, somewhere. And it says that Elijah asked his servant to go look for rain seven times. Now, that's significant in Scripture. Proverbs 24, 16 says, Though the righteous fall seven times, they, will ri they, shall, they rise again. See, one way to study Scripture is by taking a word or phrase and plugging it into a biblical or a Bible search. And, and, and you take that little phrase seven times, and it's amazing how many times it pops up. Seven is the number of perfection or completion. So it's used literally or figuratively. E either way, many sevens. Abraham bows to the ground seven times. The priests consecrate the altar by sprinkling it seven times. The word of the Lord is like silver refined seven times. Jesus ups the ante and tells uh, to forgive not seven times, but 70 times seven. Amen. The Israelites circled Jericho seven times on the seventh day, 
And Naaman dips himself in the Jordan River seven times. And Elijah prays for rain seven times. Have you ever heard of counterfactual theory? It asks this question, if. It asks that if question. Uh, let, me, let me play the part for just a minute. What if the Israelites had stopped circling the sixth circle on the sixth day? What if Naaman stopped after six dips? What if Elijah quit praying after his sixth attempt? Listen, you, you get the answer. that They probably would have forfeited the miracle that, that happened. What are you saying? I'm saying sowing or seeding clouds takes persistence. It takes patient persistence. Don't quit too soon. Just keep going. Jesus said it this way, ask, seek, and knock. Those are imperative verbs. In other words, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. It's too, see, too soon to quit. It's too soon to give up. And then the last. You seed the clouds with bold prayer. Seed the clouds with bold prayer. Nothing's more powerful than prayer. Bold prayer is a prayer that is beyond your ability, beyond your resources, and beyond your imagination. In other words, you can't do it. You're praying for something impossible. When's the last time you really prayed that kind of a prayer? That impossible prayer that was beyond you. Bold prayer is prayer that you've prayed numerous times and God's not answered that prayer when or where or how you ask but you don't feel released. You keep praying that prayer. Now, uh, there you are. Would you come, come on up and get ready for me, please? I want us to pray in just a moment. This past week, we had the opportunity to simulcast the uh, Promise Keepers event out of uh, Dallas, Texas, out of AT&T Stadium, one of the speakers on Friday evening, and friends, forgive me, forgive me, his, uh, my, my speaking, uh, or trying to say his last name. His last name is Nick Vucevic, and that's about as close as I can get to it. Nick Vucevic was born with no limbs. He has no arms, and he has no legs. I've had the opportunity to go and listen to him in person and had the opportunity this last week to listen to him through the simulcast. Now, here's a man that remembers the horrific bullying that he received. Here's a man that at a young age attempted suicide because all he could see was the pain. There are those who began to pray and intercede one of them being the school janitor, the school he attended. And this janitor began to tell him, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. Here's a man that you would have looked at and thought, there's no real future for him. That's through the natural. But prayer taps into the supernatural resources of God beyond you. I can go into greater detail, I won't, but he was called, saved, called into, and get this. The janitor said, God's going to use you, and God's getting ready to use you in the next few days, because I'm setting it up, you're going to speak to the assembly at school. <laughs> and he's thinking, no, I'm not. <laughs> Yeah, you are. And God used him. I don't know how many years ago that was. He's married. 
and he has four beautiful children. First, I want you to get this. Throughout his life, he's had to practice these three elements. First of all, first of all, he had to have that prophetic imagination that could see beyond his own limitation. You realize to this date, he has preached, I forget in how many different countries, and he has seen through his ministry over one million people born into the kingdom of God. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Amen. He had to have patient persistence. Because he was just speaking this past Friday night. He said, I'm still praying for arms and legs. I'm not giving up. God's able to do that. But he said, I'm not giving up on God just because he hasn't yet. I'm going to keep patient. For, I'm going to keep serving God. I'm going to keep on keeping on. And you want to talk about somebody that prayed bold prayers? Because when he was younger, he said, I'll never be married. Nobody will ever want me. Never happened. Self-talk, come on. Next thing you know, he began to pray. God sent a beautiful woman his way. And they've got two boys, I believe it is, two boys, if I remember correctly. And now he's got twin girls. Four kids married and has four kids. At one time, his self-talk told him, I'll never even have a marriage relationship. And look at where he's at now. And he's speaking down there, and there's probably at least 60,000, I would guess. That's what I'm estimating, between 50 and 60,000 people listening to him speak the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on, friends. Have... Have that prophetic imagination to see beyond your limitation and see what God is able to do. Have that patient persistence. Don't give up on yourself and don't give up on God. Pray, pray those big, bold prayers. Keep seeding the clouds with faith, hope, and love. You understand, God's not forgotten you. God's not forgotten you. God hasn't abandoned you. You realize that we are beneficiaries of prayers that we know nothing about. I've talked about her Born, I, I loved my grandma Elsie. She was my biggest fan, my biggest cheerleader. And everybody else was speaking all this other stuff. My grandma Elsie spoke life into me. <clears throat> Prayed for me. Born in 1900, died in 1990. 90 years old. Woman of faith. And I tell you the reason, one of the reasons, main reasons she was a woman of faith, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. She didn't memorize a random verses of scripture. She memorized chapters of the Bible. Charles Tate right now benefits from prayers I never heard her pray. Prayers I never knew that she had prayed. I'm benefiting from those prayers. You're benefiting from prayers that you knew nothing of. Amen. Harvest fields we didn't plant. Drink from wells that we didn't dig. Live in houses that we didn't build. Go back to the Old Testament. 
You'll read about those events. Wow. God's setting us up so that He can set up a generation that's going to rise up after us. My God. Aren't you excited about being part of kingdom work? Amen. Amen. It's never just for us. It's always about that third and fourth generation. Amen. Let's see some clouds. Let's see some clouds today through our prayers. Amen. Prophetic imagination. Begin to call those things that are not as though they are. Patient. Persistent patience. Bold prayers. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Another translation, beyond our imagination. God's able. Able. See, I'm still praying. Some of you may look at me funny again, but I'm still praying because I believe God's got it out there somewhere and He's able to touch someone's heart. I believe that there's still a million dollars out there that God can invest right here in our church. Amen. Praise God. Oh, come on. somebody got to help me better now. I, God has got that. Listen, if God can keep oil running in a jar... Why cannot my God, who's the same yesterday, today, and forever, supernaturally, abundantly, we do the natural, God will do the supernatural. Amen. She did the natural. Just kept pouring on. Pouring on those empty vessels kept until there was not another vessel she could find to fill up. The oil wasn't going to dry until the vessels quit showing up. Amen? Amen. Kept going. What did she do? Sold it all, paid off her debt. In the abundance of God. Is God the same yesterday, today, and forever? Yes, He is. Heavenly Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name for each and every one that's gathered here in this sanctuary. For those that have joined us online, Lord, I ask that the anointing of the Holy Spirit let us seed clouds today. Let us be men and women of faith. Begin to sow through our prayers. Sow through our prayers that we're going to seed clouds. And Lord, I begin to declare in Jesus' name, I see the cloud the size of a man's hand. I hear it rain before it ever rains. <laughs> I see the walls falling before they fall. I see Goliath going down. My God, before it ever happens. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, let it be done. Let it be done. Let it be done. Let it be done. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for being with us today. We appreciate you tuning in and being with us in service. We hope that something was said or done that did something to minister to your heart as it did ours. And we pray that you have a blessed week ahead. God bless you. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Remember, you can give online at brookportcog.com or you can mail your gift to the address below. Thanks so much for watching. See you again.